Hello, Rick from Supai here, and on today's tutorial, what we're going to talk about is how to make this trippy kind of filter. Now, this filter was inspired by the Doctor Who intro from the 60s, and what we want to do is basically have this feedback loop going on. So I'm kind of like fading in and out into view. You can kind of see me in the background here, moving my head around off the screen, but we'll get this kind of trippy type of filter. Now, what we're going to be using for this in Spark AR is the delay frame we're going to basically have this repetition so we have this loop continuing to go over and over and over again so we're going to talk about how we make this filter from scratch <laughs> So the first thing that we're going to do is make a brand new project from scratch we don't need any tracking so we're going to use a blank project so i'm just going to open this up and what we should get is something that looks like this. Now I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger just so we can see what's going on. Now what we want to do on this project is essentially take the camera texture, what we have here, and almost repeat it so we get this feedback loop. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing that we need is the camera texture itself. So on camera, I'm gonna click there and we need to pull out the camera texture. So I'm gonna click plus on camera extraction. This gives us a texture that we can use which basically has this background in here. Now what we want to do is redraw this camera background with some feedback on this. So how do we do this? Well I'm going to add a new canvas by right clicking on the sidebar, going to canvas. In the canvas I'm going to add a rectangle in here so I'm going to redraw the background. This is going to fill the entire width and height. Now currently we don't have a material, we're going to give it one. We're going to add a new material we're going to double click here. We want it to be a flat shader because our camera already has shadows, so we don't need any more and the texture we're going to pick is the camera texture itself. Now at the moment, what we have is essentially repeating what we have. You can see here that we're just redrawing the camera texture. Now, if I click rectangle, we can see this turn on and off. doesn't look any different. What do we want to do here? Well, basically what we want to hold is the camera texture itself. So then we can reuse it in our effect. So how do we go about doing this? Well, if we go up to device on this sidebar, what we can do is add a new default pipeline. So what this will do is it will let us change the defaults. Now the defaults are what we have in the patch editor, our camera texture and our device, and it's gonna scene, render pass, and it's gonna pop out at the other end on the screen output, what the camera texture is, which kind of makes sense. Basically what we're saying is on the camera texture and the device, just say what we should do into screen. What we want to do in here is add a delay frame. So over here, I'm going to right click and add a delay frame. Now what this will do is it lets us reuse the texture from the output so we can use it later on. So I'm going to take this texture and pass it in under render pass, this bottom one. Now what this means is we can add to the redrawn rectangle that we have up here which currently has this material zero, what I want to do is say, well, basically at the moment, I want this output, this texture, to be the camera texture mixed in with this delay frame. Now at the moment, I can't pick this delay frame. If I go down here, my delay frame texture will just be black. Um, what I want to do is have the camera texture mixed in. So I'm going to click this little arrow, which lets us put it in here. Now currently what we have is our camera texture linking up directly with our material. So essentially what we have is this line going between the two. Now, of course, what we wanna do is mix them together. We wanna to mix this with this. So over here, I'm gonna right click and add mix. I'm gonna connect these up and what we should see is this disappears because currently there's nothing going in there. And I want this camera texture to be the first thing that goes in here. Now this has turned back on and what I wanna right click I'm gonna add in a receiver. Now the receiver is basically saying, I wanna listen in for this delay frame. So on the receiver, I'm gonna click and add the delay frame. And if I drag this in here, currently we get a mix between this camera texture and the delay frame. And this is currently at zero, which essentially is saying, listen to this first channel at 100%, don't listen to this at all. Now if we change this number to something like 0.5, we'll see there's a slight delay starting to appear. Now this number needs to be relatively high to if we get a blur effect, something like 0 0.9. And we can see now we do get this blur effect. Now I'm gonna turn my video on just to see it in action. Now you can see in the background up here, 
my hand is moving around, but we have this blur effect going on. So this is how we just add a quick blur effect. But what we want to do is add this kind of like feedback loop that increases over time. Now at the moment that you can see in the background, my shelves don't really move, my plants don't really move. And that's because my texture and my delay texture doesn't have any difference between these backgrounds. But what we can start to add in between this delay frame and this mix is some kind of movement to the texture itself. So I'm going to disconnect this at the moment, which puts me back to normal. And what I can say in here is I can right click and add in something called a texture transform. Now a texture transform basically says do something with this texture, move it around in some way. Now if I input this in here and connect this up, at the moment we get our delay texture back because we're not actually changing this transform. It is the transform, it stays exactly the same. So I'm just getting the same thing as if I had this connection without that being in there. However, what I can do down here now is I can right click and add in a 2D transform pack. I'm gonna add this in and I'm gonna connect these up here. Now again, at the moment, this is gonna do the same thing. You can see my hand moving in here and it's giving a blur effect in the same way. But what I can start to do in here is add some numbers. Now, all of these numbers are gonna be incredibly subtle because we wanna add relatively subtle effects. So rather than this scale being one and one, which is the same as what it was to begin with, I can add in something like 0 0.005, sorry, 1.005 in the X direction. And you can see that starting to move me across the screen. It's going this way across the screen. So if I just stay still for a second, we get this fade effect going across. Now again, I can add this in the Y direction too, uh, 1.005. And this is moving down the page at the same, if I'm moving up and down, you see this kind of going down the page in this way. Now I want everything to go from the middle of the page uh, of this effect. So the pivot point is currently in this top left corner at zero, zero. I want it to be in the middle, which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So it's moving outwards instead. So we're getting this kind of outwards kind of look. Now again, I can add a little bit of rotation to kind of start spinning this in space. So I can do something like 0.1. So I'm getting some kind of movement here, very, very subtle kind of like rotation effect. Now, if I want to see the kind of like full version of this, I can actually increase all of this up over here in the mix. So at the moment it's doing 0.9. If I try something like 0 0.95, I get this kind of very blurry effect instead. There's Neef, Neef can go away. And what we're going to say is something like 0 .0, uh, 0 0.99 will give me this very kind of like effect where I'm blurring out over a longer period of time. My delay frame is having more feedback in here. So at the moment, this is probably a little bit too much, maybe something like 0 0.95 in there. There we go, kind of feels a little bit more subtle. Now what I can do is actually change this alpha using a loop instead. So underneath here, what I can add, I can right click and add a loop animation. Now I want this to go between 0 0.95 and 0 0.99 over a certain period of time. So I'm going to change this time to be six seconds. I want it to mirror. So it goes back and forth and back and forth as a loop. And in here, I'm going to add in a transition. This transition, I want it to be a number. I want that thing to be a number up there. So the start point is going to be 0 0.95. The end point, not one, because I'll just freeze it in time, is 0 0.99. So very close to freezing it. I can add this progress in to this top one. I can change this curve to be something like maybe circular in out. Let's see how that looks. And this value can now go into this mix. So this is going to basically fade it in and out and have this blur effect over six seconds. And you can see this kind of number changing. It's currently near the end point, so it's being blurred and it will come back down again. So it'll kind of have this fade effect in here. So by adding these things in really, really quickly, we have this delay frame that we're holding on to each time. We're then taking the delay frame and actually transforming it. We're adding a little bit of a tweak to it. We're turning it around in space and then we're mixing it with the current frame. So we have this blur effect. And then we're saying how much do we want of this delay? We could be really high, we could be really low, so it doesn't do too much. But by adding this all together, we are saying in this rectangle that's over space, we're drawing a mix of real life and this delay.